Let's study ESE 3H algebra of physical measurables. Algebraic operations uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. A physical quantity has a certain algebraic properties. First of all, the simplest uh, physical quantity is a scalar. Scalar have a scalar is an example of scalars a mass, time, and so on. Have algebraic properties of uh, the same as those of real numbers. So, in fact, the real numbers is uh, just a carbon copy of uh, a scalar. Okay. However. The real number in mathematics uh, does not have any physical dimensions. And uh, in physics, these are expressed in terms of real number. However, however, they are in units of a physical quantity. That's quite important. For example, mass one kilogram, one is a real number. However, Without this unit called the kilogram, I cannot express, I cannot express the physical quantity mass in terms of a real number only. So, even though you are familiar with the, the, this number, you learned the mathematics for a long time, however, Without, without attaching an appropriate a physical unit, you cannot express a physical quantity with only pure number. This is a dimension list. This dimension means of, of physical dimensions. So unit physical quantity. Unit physical quantity is used as um, kilogram, length, what about length? One meter. Length, one meter. This meter, M, indicates the unit of a length. So if I erase this unit, it's a nothing. It's a, it's a dimensionless mathematical number. However, if I attach an appropriate physical unit, you can express this uh, physical value that is a scalar. The scalar is uh, something like this, mass, length, and time. For example, time, one second, one second. Atta by attaching this unit, I can express all of the these physical quantity in terms of a real number in units of appropriate physical quantity. Okay, so they are called scalars. A scalar does not have any directional information. And these satisfy some algebraic property the same as those for real numbers. So originally, bec because we, we are living in, we experience nature, nature gave us the, this kind of mathematical structure of uh, algebraic property of these physical quantities. Mass, length, time, they are scalars, and the scalars satisfy the same algebraic property as the real numbers. Any two scalars of different uh, physical dimensions are constructed two distinct sets of this. Distinct set? Right. Mass constructs Mass constructs a set of real numbers. Length, time, they are all different real number. The number is dimensionless so because we factor the unit out physical that has a physical dimension. So they are of different real numbers. So it is different from mathematics. For example, I have two masses. I can add these two to find the total mass. I can add the two lengths L1 and L2 
and the total length is L1 plus L2, something like that. However, it is impossible for me to add mass and length. One kilogram plus one meter is not defined at all. Even though we have real numbers, physical quantity, the scalars usually have their physical own physical units without having the same physical unit. It is impossible for us to add the two scalars. That's a different from that's a different point from uh, mathematics. Products of two physical quantities construct another set of real numbers. For example, we can define the linear momentum. Linear momentum is mass times velocity. What is velocity? Velocity is the time derivative of a position with respect to time. This is the limit. The change, this is a displacement from uh, instant at time t to time t plus epsilon. And this is the difference divided by the time difference epsilon. And we take the limit as time goes to zero, time difference goes to zero, then it approaches the instantaneous of velocity. Okay. In that case, I can define something by multiplying a physical quantity by another physical quantity to construct new, a new physical quantity. Linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Okay, these two different physical construct, uh, physical quantities after being multiplied to the other, it is multiplied by the other, we can construct a new physical quantity. As I already told you, linear momentum, mass, velocity, they are of, the dif of different dimensions, then they construct, a, well, this is actually the vector that has a directional information too. So. I cannot add a vector to scalar, so this algebra is not defined. Mass and velocity, this is another vector. Even though I introduce linear momentum and velocity, I cannot, I cannot add these two vectors because the physical dimensions of these two elements are different, okay? Number three, a vector algebra. You had better recall that we learned about the Euclidean geometry in middle school. All of the algebraic properties of vectors are chosen are, are carbon copies of those for displacement. Displacement. Displacement is a change in position. And this is a starting point and the end point. I connect the two initial and final point and then attach an arrow to display the direction of the motion, uh, direction of the change. So just like this, if I shift this end point to here, I have a different arrow. The length of the arrow is the magnitude of this displacement and that is called the distance in addition to the distance from the, from the initial to final position, a vector must have a directional information where is, the, where is the starting point and where is the end point. So the length, the magnitude, and direction should be included in a vector. And the most, the most primitive vector is displacement and you start from A to B and you finally arrive at C. So this displacement, displacement, and 
From the beginning to the end, this is the final displacement. From this, you can see the addition of two vectors can be defined in such a manner to connect the initial and final directly and attach an arrow at the end of the destination. So, using this method, we can construct an algebra of addition of two vectors. The new, I told you the primitive form of vector is the displacement. Okay, a vector space is a set of vectors. Just like the real numbers construct a set of real number, a vectors, many, many vectors, they are collected to construct a set of vectors. We call this set of vector as a vector space. And if I collect every displacement in space connecting any two points directly, then we can construct a dis uh, displacement vector space, something like that. Multiplication by a dimensional scalar to a vector construct another vector. Just like what I have told you that one page before, velocity can be multiplied by mass to construct a linear momentum. Once a vector is being multiplied by a scalar, the final result must have a vector quantity. The product changes the dimension of the resultant physical quantity. Okay, so linear momentum is also a vector. Four, the properties of the Euclidean space. The Euclidean space is mathematical model of the space in which we live. Euclidean space, we can we can describe the Euclidean space in terms of a Cartesian coordinate system. They are all orthogonal to each other, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. In Euclidean space, when it is being expressed in terms of Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z coordinates can be changed, vary, coordinate can be changed vary from minus infinity to infinity. However, have you ever seen an infinity in real space? We even do not know the end of the universe. So our mathematical model of Euclidean space is not perfectly verified. But for simplicity, we use this kind of mathematical model by assuming that our space is Euclidean. Later, when you study the special theory of relativity, we finally learn that this, our space is not Euclidean space, but by including time as an additional axis, and they do not follow the exact rule for the rule transformation rule exactly the same as Euclidean space. It is in, in fact the spatial direction and time direction they are working differently. However, they have a special feature of Minkowski space that is uh, distinct from Euclidean space. Anyway, right now we'll let us focus on the Euclidean space only. Euclidean space has a translational symmetry. For example, if I want to solve a Euclidean geometry, I can introduce an axis that is usually the Cartesian coordinate system. But as far as we know, we can choose the origin anywhere. By choosing the cho choice of the origin, at a certain point does not change the, any mathematics and any physics. So because of that, I can shift the origin along on any point on an axis. This translation is also possible to an arbitrary direction. Translational symmetry allow us to construct a 
the property of real space, the interval from 0 to 1 is identical to the interval from arbitrary real number plus 1 between the x and x plus 1. We assume that this one, one unit, this one unit, is invariant on the translation by x. So this is a, a translational symmetry. This kind of translational symmetry is, uh, uh, can be expressed as a uniformness of the Euclidean space, and we also call it homogeneousness. In addition to that, Euclidean space has no directional preference. So I can choose x-axis along the this direction or this direction. Whatever direction why I choose, mathematics and physics doesn't change at all. This is a, because of the properties called rotational symmetry. And another way of specifying the rotational symmetry is isotropy. The all of the direction in three-dimensional space are equivalent to each other. Five, translational symmetry. I have already told you about the translational symmetry. A vector is an arrow. For example, a uh, displacement vector. I can translate this vector anywhere without changing the direction. This is changing the direction. Without changing the direction, I can draw a parallelogram. So translate at the length of the arrow is invariant and direction of the arrow is invariant, then this can be a translation or transformation. So this translation does not vary the value of a vector. The so vector is a carbon copy of a displacement vector. As far as we know regarding the displacement vector, a vector is invariant on the translation. So a vector has the length and direction. The length and directions are invariant, then we call it a translational uh, transformation. Addition of two vectors. Two vectors has a length, and length is magnitude and direction. I have a vector and v vector. I can add them up by attaching the head and tail of two vectors. And then tail of the first uh, last one, this first one, and the head of the last one, connect them and use the arrow to identify the initial to final position. So this is called A plus B. Because of the translation of symmetry, I can translate this uh, vector B like that, and I can translation this vector A like that, then I find this is, B, uh, this is A and B. So another way of adding the two vectors is possible, that is a B plus A. We know Euclidean geometry states that the diagonal of a parallelogram is uniquely defined. Okay. Therefore, we automatically find the commutation relation, this, uh, commut this addition of two vectors as well as the addition of the two real numbers, commutative, commutative. We have another algebra that is a very useful, a dot b. I have one vector, I have the other vector. I'd like to know the product of this, not direct product, but a product of projections. For example, I have a and b, and if I want to multiply a to b as a projection, that means if I have an angle between the two theta, then the projection of a vector a onto b is a cosine theta. So scalar product is nothing but the magnitude product a 
absolute value b absolute value multiplied by cosine theta where cosine theta is the angle between the two vectors this is called the scalar product i can evaluate this uh, scalar product in another way F multiply the magnitude of a and then this angle is the same this right angle a times b cosine theta that is the projection of b onto a just before we multiply the b by projection of a onto b that is a cosine theta so scalar product a dot b is found to be the same as b dot a so this says that the a dot b the scalar product of two vectors is commutative a similar symmetry that means if i have a vector b i have another vector a that has the same value of the scalar product then the angle should be the same and magnitudes of the two vectors should be the same but once the theta is known i can construct a cone and the there are another a prime that has the same value as a dot b a dot b should be the same as a prime dot b as long as the angle between these vector with the with the a or the b should be the same so then it is it it, it construct the surface generated by varying a construct a cone that is called azimuthal symmetry. Azimuthal symmetry. We believe that the most important achievement that the Rune de got is a Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates. In view of scientific development, he is a, his role was a very, very important. Cartesian coordinate system. It is an objective of a Descartes. Okay. Cartesian coordinate system is also called the rectangular coordinate system. Hey, we use a hat to indicate the vector is a vector is of length unity. Then we attach a hat on top of a vector. Then it is a unit vector x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. In space, the, the uh, rectangular coordinate system, Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system, we can define the unit vector along the x-axis that we use E1 hat. Unit vector along the y-axis, unit vector E2 hat, and along the z-axis, unit vector E3 hat. x corresponds to 1, y correspond to index 2, and z correspond to index 3. Okay, we can immediately notice that every three, these, these are three vector, unit vectors, unit vectors of the Cartesian coordinate system are of equal length that is a unity and they are dimensionless dimensionless unity this is pure number one magnitude is one and they make a right angle angle between one and two two and three and three and one are all right angle therefore the scalar product of bet between any two distinct unit Cartesian coordinate basis vectors for example e1 hat e2 hat they must be 1 times 1 times cosine 90 degrees. Therefore, cosine 90 degrees, 0. So E1 dot E2, E3 dot E3, E, uh, E2 dot E3, and E3 dot E1, they are all 0. In addition, a square 
a vector dot a is a vector magnitude a vector magnitude cosine zero. So this is a u one. So a magnitude squared. So a dot a is all usually used is written in the form a squared. Okay, this is a scalar product itself. So because the all of the three Cartesian unit basis vector are of unit length, the all of the squares are one. We consider the rate of change in physical variable in uh, uh, that varies depending on a parameter such as time or position. Okay. Delta x is the displacement, displacement from time t1 to t2. At t1, a particle is placed, placed there, and at t2, it arrived at here. So displacement is x t2 subtracted by t1. If it is along, if it, if the motion is along a single x-axis, I can make use of a, only a single real variable to express the displacement from t1 to t2. If we consider the, in the three-dimensional case, so we can attach an arrow to express as a vector. Anyway, it is a displacement from t1 to t2. The difference of the position is called displacement. Average velocity is the displacement, displacement divided by the time difference. The time difference is a t2 minus t1. Instantaneous velocity is the one when these two values approach the other. Okay, so velocity, instantaneous velocity is expressed in as uh, if we employ the Leibniz uh, notation for the derivative, that's dx over dt, and, and actually it's a limit of a difference, displacement, divided by time difference as the, in the limit as the time difference approaches zero. Later, we will study in more detail about the exponential function and the sinusoidal function. But right now, we can consider just answer. The exponential function is defined by this. Derivative of the exponential function is itself. And if I substitute x equals to 0, it is 1. <coughs> The recursive application of this and the second or the third or the nth order derivative is always the same as the same the original function. This is very special nature of the exponential function. Later, we will find that this one can be used to find the power series expansion of exponential function. So one plus x plus x squared divided by two factorial over uh, n the infinite sum always reproduce, reproduces the exponential function. Right now, we are not, our, we do not focus on the how to derive this formula, but we'd like to make use of this. We will derive it later. Here, if x is a physical variable, it cannot be added unless it has dimensionless if it is dimensionless. So, x must be dimensionless. Only if, only if x is dimensionless, these sum, this sum is defined. Therefore, exponential, if you write an exponential x, this x must be a dimensionless number. It does not carry in time, mass, and length, something like that. So, if I consider exponential ax, I can substitute ax for this x. Then, again, I find this kind of exp expansion. Uh, therefore, we conclude that exponential ax can be defined, and it can be defined only if a times x is a dimensionless. 
Okay, uh, we have seen the very different feature of physical variable in comparison with the mathematical numbers. In mathematics, they don't care about the physical dimensions, so it is liable for you to make many, many mistakes when you deal with the algebra of a physical quantity. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.